tales for dark nights. Yesterday, I had a rare return of energy and positivity. Today, I woke up miserable with all the signs of an oncoming cold. Something about the timing of it had me more agitated than usual. In fact, I was downright angry. My schedule for the last week had been crazy, but somehow I felt more and more alive by the end of it. Yesterday, I wrote down a massive to-do list. I had the energy and attitude to get my life in order. To hit the gym, to eat healthy, and to be more ambitious at work. The sudden surge in motivation had been a long time coming, but it was gone in an instant when I woke up with a sore throat. I sat at the kitchen table glaring out the window as I waited for my coffee to brew. God damn it! I was beginning to feel like this happened every time. Whenever I finally woke up and beat my bad habits, something would happen to kick me right back in. This time it was a sudden oncoming cold. Last time it had been a sudden inability to sleep. Before that, it had been a sudden case of food poisoning. Stewing over it made me so angry that I began to entertain stranger and stranger ideas. What if life was out to get me? What if reality itself was tuned to keep me down? If that were true, then what had I done during the last week to get the motivation surge from yesterday? As I began going over it in my head... I realized that the busy week had made it impossible for me to do many of the things I normally did. For two or three of the days, I'd hardly eaten, and I'd had way less caffeine overall. Feeling weird, I got up and turned off my coffee maker. Maybe I'd try going without the black stuff for a bit. I went about my morning routine after that. When I returned to the kitchen, the coffee maker was back on. My roommate was there, bleary-eyed and zombie-like, standing over the machine. He mumbled, Want some? I should have seen the signs then. At the time, I thought nothing of it. Maybe it had been a silly idea to try and kick my caffeine habit on a Monday with no warning. I took a traveler's mug with me in the car on the way to work, but a feeling I could not quite articulate hit me every time I tried to take a sip on the commute. I would lift up the mug, smell the coffee within, feel a surge of wakefulness and need, and then put the mug back down without drinking any. It was too much. I needed it, and I didn't want to need it. I just got angry at myself for how desperate I was to drink it. Sitting at my desk that morning, I began to feel the weight of my decision behind my eyes and on my brain. The world felt heavier. My awareness was a boulder tipped on the edge of the cliff of sleep, and I was exhausting myself just keeping it from falling over. A co-worker came by. Hey, bud, got a case of the Mondays. Here, you need this more than I do. He put a mug of coffee on my table. I stared at him until he went away, then I went to the office kitchen and dumped the coffee out. I wasn't trying to be rude, I just didn't want to have to sit there smelling it and having it weighed on my resistance minute after minute. In the kitchen was a huge tray of bagels, donuts, and random leftover cake from an event that weekend. I approached with a grin until my fingers were just above that last blueberry bagel. It was the last one. It was more valuable. I was tired, so for some reason I needed this. A free, unexpected blueberry bagel would make up for the pain of caffeine deprivation. <laughs> but, but, but why? Why do I need this? <sighs> Sullen resentment joined the burning star of anger under my ribs. Was I really going to just switch from caffeine to sugar for my indulgence this Monday morning? For that matter, why did I hate so much that it was Monday morning? It almost felt like an excuse just to indulge. I sat staring at my computer blankly. I wanted to browse Reddit instead of work, but before I did, it occurred to me that that was just another indulgence. Begrudgingly, I actually started doing my job for the day. But I did jump up reaching lunchtime. It was time to eat. That would help me feel better. I drove to the nearest drive through and studied the menu for nearly two minutes before I realized that everything on it would just make me more tired. It was all heavy. Hamburgers, fries, chicken sandwiches. Uh, I ate this every day of the week and just felt gross and sick the rest of my workday. I tried another chain, but the offerings were the same. This one had a salad option, but it would come with a ton of dressing and processed stuff. I don't know if I could resist using the dressing. 
I even wasted precious lunchtime going to a grocery store, but I wandered around its aisles in confused horror as I realized that there was literally nothing available that was easily edible but would also not make me tired. As a last resort, I realized I could use the office kitchen to cook something. Nobody had ever done it as far as I knew, because it was awkwardly public and would fill the area with food smells, but I had no other choice. I started looking for extremely basic ingredients. The first box I picked up was expired. So was the second. I didn't want to bother any of the employees, so I just took the freshest expired box and went up front to check out. I chose the self-checkout aisle and scanned my choice. Yeah, the computer didn't react. Not working? An employee asked. She took the box from me and scanned it a few times. Hmm, I guess it's not reading it. So how do I buy it? I asked her. I guess you can't. Sorry. Frustrated and out of time, I left the box with her and began to walk out. As I passed her by way of an awkward apology, she said, Monday's right. <laughs> Maybe some coffee would help. That moment crystallized something in me. I stopped, turned, and looked at her. She was serious and sincere. Everyone was. I'd been serious and sincere when I'd suggested coffee to people in the past. I returned to the office and sat at my computer. No longer working, I waited. Whoa, you look sick, my boss said when she came by. Are you feeling all right? I nodded. Maybe get some coffee, she said. You know, a little pick-me-up. There it was. I nodded again. About an hour later, a co-worker came by. Hey, I heard you were feeling sick today. We got some extra Chipotle by accident on lunch order. He left a large, foil-wrapped burrito on my desk. I nodded and smiled. And when he moved on, I threw it in the trash. When the clock neared five, I snuck out the back way. Just before I left the building, I peered around a corner and saw my boss and a co-worker at my cubicle, surprised that I wasn't there. Traffic was horrible and the commute was long, but every time I went to turn on the radio, I stopped myself. That was just another way of tuning out. When I got home, I went straight to my room and locked the door. Sleep that night was easy, deep, and incredible. I couldn't believe it. I struggled with sleep every single night of my life. But one day, resisting the weird pressure to tune out and I slept like a baby... <laughs> When I opened my door, my roommate was standing there with a coffee mug. Hey, bro, this is for you. I tried to maintain a mask of politeness. Oh, well, what's this for? Just, uh, didn't see you last night. Thought you might need it. I took the mug graciously. I thanked him and left it on my nightstand. The world felt different. I felt different. Showering... It felt oddly real, and I could feel the individual water droplets in the stream rather than just this numb pressure. My body felt lighter, and, and for once, the weight behind my eyes was gone. The relief of not having that heaviness there was disconcerting. I mean, was this how humans were normally supposed to feel? I mean, had cavemen walked around feeling decently fine every single day? <laughs> On the commute, I didn't listen to music. I sat with only my awareness and my thoughts. Time passed ever so slowly as a result, but I didn't dare fall back into the flow. At stoplights, I looked left and right, and other drivers stared straight ahead, unaware that I was watching them. Some bobbed their heads lightly to unseen music, but none were awake, not like me. At one light, I watched them all stare straight ahead for nearly three minutes without so much as blinking. That couldn't be right, could it? Yeah, I must have missed them blinking. <laughs> Someone had left an elaborate cake in the office kitchen. Twenty blueberry bagels had been stacked nearby. It all looked mighty delicious. And that was exactly why I didn't take any. My boss came by an hour later. Hey, Starbucks has a barista here. We're about to have a free coffee tasting. Oh, oof. Yeah, I am coffeeed out, I told her. Are you? She tilted her head. You look really tired. Are you still sick from yesterday? I frowned. No, I feel great. It's free, though, and you really should have some coffee. Really? I'm all right. Come on, it'll be fun. I was beginning to feel a little weird about this. 
No, thank you. Really, I'm fine. Everyone else is going. I said the word a little more sharply than I intended. No. Hmm, rude. She rolled her eyes and moved on. What the hell had that been about? I had looked after her, confused and, and hurt. While the other employees all gathered for free coffee and lemon pound cake, I stayed in my cubicle. Oddly, I wasn't as hungry as I expected. One day without food had not been lethal. I did not require it. In fact, sitting there, feeling light and spry, I realized that eating McDonald's or Wendy's or Chipotle's made me feel tired. And being tired made me feel weak, which made me make poor choices. Like eating heavy food. Eating heavy food led me to eating heavy food again, keeping me tired every single day. Being tired every single day made me drink caffeine every single day. What the hell had I been doing all my life? Had I not been outside the cycle of terrible food and caffeine dependence for even a single adult day? A man stopped at my cubicle and regarded me for a moment. I almost didn't recognize him. It was the regional vice president, but he appeared to have gained noticeable weight since I last saw him. His chubby jowls bounced distractingly as he said, Company meeting in the kitchen. I nodded and got up to follow him. The coffee tasting was still going on when I entered, and all 40 of our employees were packed too deep in a ring around the table in the center where the cake was being handed out. It must have been my imagination, but my co-workers seemed darker somehow. Horrible purple bags were visible under their eyes, and they moved about, slumped and haggard. Richard's hair was thinner, and Marie's face was lined with age. Dean's waistline was two inches bigger than I remembered, and the haircut I liked on my boss the week before, now it looked poorly done. It felt like I was looking at a high-definition television for all that it exposed flaws and blemishes, and, and suddenly I remembered feeling the individual drops of the shower. Someone passed me a plate with a large piece of cake on it and a plastic fork. The too deep ring of people started devouring their shares with horrible slurping and smacking noises. I stared around in masked horror. Were we all really so slovenly? Had I just gotten used to it? As I gazed around the room, they slowly began looking up at me. The room fell silent, and all those purple-ringed bloodshot eyes turned towards me. Richard asked, Why aren't you eating? Oh, I'm full, I told him. It was the best I could come up with while on the spot. Marie frowned. You didn't eat anything yesterday, either. You're making everyone feel awkward. You're making everyone feel fat, Dean added with anger as he touched his waistline with his free hand and held his cake close with the other. I took an unconscious step back. As a group, they moved forward one step. The regional vice president ordered, Eat some cake. I held my plate a little further away. I don't want to. My boss glared. Eat some goddamn cake. Forty pairs of eyes watched me with vicious anger, as if I'd personally insulted each and every one of them. They were waiting for my reply. I had the distinct feeling that if I said no, they might attack me, but my newly gained freedom was too precious to give up just like that. I threw my cake on the floor and ran for my life. They began screaming like rabid animals and surged after me, knocking down cubicle walls and pouring forth like a river. I screamed too, but in abject terror. What the hell had I done to infuriate everyone around me so much? I darted for the back door of the building and burst out into the parking lot. Two maintenance men were standing a few feet away smoking. They turned and looked at me in surprise, and I came to a shocked halt. Their eyes were dried, gray husk, and tar dripped from their noses and mouths. Their skin was thin, so thin, God, so paper thin that I could see their veins and arteries pulsing in their necks. Tumors had grown like bubbles from behind their ears. One said, You all right, man? The other held a hand forward. You look like you could use a cigarette. I'm losing my mind! I screamed at them and at myself. I ran for my car and pulled out of that lot as my coworkers stormed out the back door in search of me. They were all larger now, and they trampled right over the frail maintenance men, splattering their blood and organs in every direction. I looked down from my rearview mirror aghast, but I was not safe on the road. 
how the cars swerved this way and that at random. Within, I could see blind men and women with stumps for hands trying to drive without fingers. No, no, not stumps. Their cell phones had sunk into their skin and festered, not blind. Their heads were simply held down at an angle by veins that had grown out of their infested hands. I screamed at them to get away from me, but they couldn't hear me. I sped on trying to get away from them, but there were everywhere. A cop car turned on its lights and turned onto the road behind me. That finally broke through my terror and I pulled over to the side of the road. The police, yeah, the police would help. Yes, I could tell them what was happening and I could get help. He looked normal as he walked up to my car. Yes, my delusion was passing. License and registration, please. I got out my wallet, but he reached in through my open window and took it out of my hands. He began rifling through. He took my cash and threw the wallet back in past me. I tried to protest. Hey, what are you- He shouted, Stop resisting! The next thing I saw was a nightstick arcing towards my face. Darkness found me. Darkness and pain. I awoke in the hospital. That weird feeling of high-definition sight and texture was gone. I sat for a time just recovering my senses and feeling out the pain in my head. Apparently, I was not too horribly wounded, and, and I hadn't lost any teeth. What had I done? God, I must have had an episode. A fit. Oh, my co-workers probably thought I was nuts. Yeah, I was bored, and there was a television in the upper corner of my room, but I resisted turning it on to pass the time. What seemed like an eternity later... Only five minutes or so in reality. A doctor came in. I was relieved to see that he looked normal. His hair was nicely kept, he was fit, and he bore an expression of empathy. Hey there, how are you doing? My mouth was dry, but I coughed a little and then said, What happened? Seems like you tried to go cold turkey off caffeine and sugar, he told me compassionately. And you didn't eat for a few days at the same time. Bad recipe. Apparently you really flipped out there for a minute. Oh, God. It was true. I had some sort of a nervous breakdown. I must have freaked everyone out. Your co-workers, they're actually all here, I believe, out in the waiting room. They're all very worried about you. I couldn't believe it. Really? Yeah. You didn't hurt anybody, if that's what you're worried about. You just panicked and ran for your life all of a sudden. <sighs> that was a relief. I looked at the tubes running down to my arm. Saline solution and electrolytes. Just a neurochemical imbalance from too much dietary stress all at once. I nodded. Man, I saw the craziest things. His compassionate expression felt a neutral concern. What? What is it? He shook his head. We, uh, <clears throat> haven't given you any caffeine yet. Which you probably should get some sometime soon. And you probably shouldn't mention anything you, uh, that you saw. My relief turned to worry. Why? He glanced down at the floor, then pressed his lips together unhappily, turned, and left the room. A nurse came in a few minutes later and helped me up. I was shaky, so she gave me a wheelchair and rolled me out toward the waiting room. As I approached, I saw all of my co-workers standing there with concern. They really all had come out to see me. But as I got closer, I wondered, why? Surely they hadn't stopped the entire company for the entire day just to sit and wait for my recovery at the hospital. Once I got close enough, I began to understand. Dean was there, and his waistline was a foot wider than in my delusion. Marie was a decrepit old woman with rotting teeth. Richard was almost completely bald, with a few scraggly stray hairs angled randomly from the corners of his scalp. Here we all were, and I was not hallucinating. <laughs> Each and every one of us was a horrifying, unhealthy mess. And, oh my God, what did that mean for me? What did I look like? I began to look down at my hands, but creeping horror shook me forcefully as I began to take in the rotting bits of flesh on my arms. We brought you a coffee and a blueberry bagel. My boss said, leaning forward to hand them to me. Her teeth were uneven. 
and she had a double chin I never noticed before. My co-workers waited with bated breath. Their expressions cried, Please, 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 though they said nothing out loud. I took the coffee in one hand and the bagel in the other before I looked up at the nurse behind my wheelchair. Haunted in a permanent and traumatized sort of way, she nodded absently down at me. With relief, I wolfed down that bagel in ten bites and guzzled half the coffee. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. When I opened them, everything was back to normal. Dean looked great. Marie was beautiful. Richard had a full head of hair and I was one of the gang all over again. I smiled. I'm glad you're all here. I can't believe it. They rushed forward with relief and excitement to hug me and wish me well and tell me how worried they'd been about me. A slick, cool man emerged from the crowd. It was the regional vice president. Looking good, just like I remembered. We're all a family in this business. How about a night out at karaoke? I'm the company. Everyone cheered and ribbed each other and they swept me up to my feet again. It was such a relief to leave my delusion and terror behind. Reality is a tenuous thing, I knew then. It had to be carefully defended and cultivated. Even something simple like a dietary imbalance can cause you to become paranoid and see horrible things. I turned back to the nurse to give thanks and say goodbye. She looked despondent, like she could use a pick-me-up. Hey, want the rest of my coffee? She turned away without reply. Huh. Rude. Rude. Rude.